In this awe-inspiring landscape, the canyons are so deep, the precipices so high, and the distances so far, it's easy to lose sight of reality. Cliffs are strange and daunting places to live. It seems nothing could thrive here, yet to those that can hang on, the sheer walls offer shade, shelter and food. An impressive chain of uplands in the USA once stretched from the Rocky Mountains in Colorado and New Mexico to the desert basins of Arizona and Utah. For eons, wind and water worked at the rock, carving the high plateau into a land of chasms, monoliths and regal arches. The landscape appears deserted, but in the deepest recesses of this vertical world, there is life. Its presence is given away by the slightest sound, a fleeting glimpse, a dancing shadow. For most of the year, cliff swallows spend the day hawking insects on the wing. Only during their breeding season do they come to the ground, and then only for as long as it takes to build a nest and raise their chicks. The mud pellets are cemented together with saliva and plastered layer upon layer to form a distinctive gourd-like nest. There can be a three-week gap between the first and the last pairs to start breeding. So while the late arrivals are still busy building, the early birds will already have started to lay eggs. Cliff swallows breed in colonies, attaching their nests to the roof of a cave or overhang. Here they're sheltered from the rain and are inaccessible from above. Even from below, the birds are well beyond reach. The bobcat is not uncommon, but it keeps to the shade and the shadows, so it's rarely seen. It's an opportunist, eating anything it can corner and catch, including lizards. To make the most of its narrow retreat, the chuckwaller gulps air, inflating its body until it's firmly wedged between the rock. A bobcat could hook it out with a sharp claw if it could reach it. The hunted must periodically come out to feed. All the hunters have to do is watch and wait. The prairie falcon has acute vision and can detect the slightest movement below. Over a thousand years ago, the falcon would have seen beneath it the activities of a thriving human community, which is now long gone.
Around AD 1300, a severe drought may have forced the Anasazi Indians, who had lived in the sheltered recesses of the canyon walls for 700 years, to abandon their homes. But today, those homes are not deserted. There's a limited supply of seeds on the cliff face, so a chipmunk climbs up to the top in search of food. Its activities have not gone unnoticed. The falcon's patience is rewarded. Whirling its tail helps to maintain balance and may even reduce the speed of its fall. Rock squirrels are easier for falcons to catch than chipmunks. They're larger and slower, but too heavy to carry off. Out in the open, even a falcon is vulnerable. A passing eagle flying high above causes the smaller bird to mantle its catch to hide it. But the golden eagle is after larger prey. Desert bighorns are superbly adapted for life on boulder-strewn cliffs. Their cloven hooves have hard edges and spongy centers that provide good traction even on sheer rock. They can scramble up and down precipitous slopes which are well beyond the abilities of most of their enemies. Only eagles pose a threat. They occasionally kill newborn lambs. During the breeding season, small groups of females are herded by a mature ram who claims exclusive mating rights. But his reign will only last for as long as he can fight off rivals. He needs to sire as many offspring as possible while he's still dominant, and he checks his harem constantly for their readiness to mate. Twenty years ago, bighorns were seriously threatened by disease and hunters. Hunting is now strictly controlled, and the sheep have made a remarkable comeback. But poachers continue to endanger their survival. In the past, marksmen kept their eye in by practicing on the image of the real thing. The Anasazi's rock art tells us much about their way of life and the wild animals they observed and hunted. Defacing the rock was outlawed long ago. Lizards were obviously abundant, but the rock also bears evidence of their distant ancestors. Huge fossilized footprints of dinosaurs, which lived here 150 million years ago, trail up the cliff faces. Shallow depressions on the cliff tops are the products of erosion, not prehistoric monsters. They hold an ancient secret, a dormant life form which the rain will awake. Summer storms deluge the cliff tops. The runoff pours over the edge as temporary waterfalls, filling pools below. Within hours, the pools ring with the sound of courting canyon tree frogs. These frogs are well adapted to life on a vertical plane. Sucker-like toes enable them to cling onto sheer surfaces. A 
At night, the male's croaks resound across the water, attracting females from as much as a mile away. Within days, they will all have spawned, and within a few weeks, tiny frogs will be crawling from the dwindling pools to start new lives in permanently damp areas on the cliff face. Along the back wall of a few alcoves, there are little oases where water seeps through porous sandstone. In these hanging gardens, scarlet monkey flowers flourish along with shooting stars and yellow columbines. The availability of water limits plant growth, but where it runs freely, there are enough flowers to attract nectar feeders. In an average year, less than 10 inches of rain falls to dampen this parched land, but after the storms, the cliff tops are pockmarked with pools cupped in the desert rock. Primitive life forms dominate the pothole communities. They include some of the oldest groups of crustaceans, like the tiny clam shrimp. The females are already ripe with eggs. Pothole organisms have had to adapt in a unique way to survive in this harsh and fluctuating environment. The tiny shrimps are so finely tuned to their temporary world that they can turn their life forces on and off as quickly as they get wet or dry. The stresses of life in a desert pothole are among the most extreme in the world. A sudden downpour can radically change the temperature, acidity and oxygen levels. Heavy rain can flood the pool, flushing out its tiny inhabitants to certain death. Now new hazards threaten their existence. In a realm where water can vanish in a matter of hours, speed is vital. The pothole community's only chance of survival is to breed. In the sandy bottom, thousands of eggs await the coming of the next rains. Then the fast and furious process of growth and reproduction will begin all over again. Marooned by the retreating water, few of the adults will live to see another day. At dusk, night hunters prowl the cliffs.
The ring-tailed cat was once encouraged by miners, gold panners and prospectors as a mascot and a good omen. It helped to limit the numbers of cockroaches, mice and snakes down the mines and round the camps. Pallid bats too helped to control vermin even during the heyday of the Anasazi. Several types of scorpion live on the cliffs. The sting of the striped-tailed scorpion is no worse than a bee's, but it can disable a small mammal. The bat bites the head, trying to paralyze its victim before it can strike back. And the bats do regularly get stung. They should writhe in agony, but they seem to find the effects only mildly irritating. They may be immune to the venom. The venom gets broken down during digestion, so even the sting can safely be eaten. Pallid bats are common in a wide variety of habitats. They thrive on the cliffs, but they're not restricted to them. Higher up the slopes, there's a highly specialized creature which lives round cliff tops. The canyon mouse rarely needs to drink. It gets all the liquid it needs from the body fluids of insect prey. The corpses of what was until a few hours ago a thriving pothole community provide both food and moisture. Antlers are rich in calcium and other essential minerals, and the mice often chew on them. High on the cliff, the mice are relatively safe. Few predators can climb to the top to hunt them. In the cracks and crevices lower down, there are enemies which can slither into the rock's labyrinth of dark tunnels. The liar snake's large eyes are highly sensitive to dim light, enabling the serpent to hunt after dusk. The snake absorbs heat from the rocks, unlike the lizard which relies on the sun's rays to warm its body. So the snake can hunt at night when the lizards are cold and sluggish. The pack rat is too bulky to swallow, so has nothing to fear. It builds stick houses among rocky screes or in cracks on the ledges. These rodents have lived on the ledges for thousands of years, often building new houses on top of old ones. They're hoarders. They festoon their homes with pebbles, cactus pads, bits of bone and other debris. They find shiny objects irresistible. Among the junk, more valuable items have been found, including ancient stick animals made by the Anasazi. Grain harvested by the tribe has also been discovered in the foundations of pack rat houses, giving us clues to the Indian's diet, as well as the climatic conditions of those far off days. Pack rats can breed at an amazing rate. Each female gives birth to between one and five young at a time and can have four litters a year. At a week old, the young are covered with fine fur. In another six days, their eyes will have opened and at two months old, they will be capable of breeding. The cliffs could become overrun with rodents if there weren't predators to help keep their populations in check.
the ring-tail cat actually belongs to the raccoon family. Although it's omnivorous, eating plants, birds and lizards, insects and rodents form the bulk of its diet. The maze of tunnels beneath the boulders offers sanctuary to a deer mouse, but it'll only be safe if it doesn't panic and break cover. Its night hunting over, the ringtail holds up in a snug cavern deep within the rock. In cold weather, it wraps its tail around its head and body for extra warmth. As the creatures of the night retire, others take over the endless struggle between the hunters and the hunted. A golden eagle scans the land below for prey. It can fly a distance of 50 miles a day in search of food. It makes use of updrafts rising above the cliff and spiraling currents of warm air to gain height. Like the falcon, an eagle can focus on a mouse from several hundred feet, but it needs larger prey, particularly when it has young to feed. Jackrabbits are abundant in the canyons. They form up to 90% of the local eagle's diet. While the male does most of the hunting for the family, the female stays on or near the nest to keep guard. She alone feeds the newly hatched chicks, taking care not to step on one with her powerful talons. While they're very young, the eaglets are vulnerable to attack from a variety of predators. For this reason, eagles prefer to build their eyries high on an inaccessible crag where their chicks are relatively safe. It has taken millions of years for the cliff dwellers to adapt to the ups and downs of their vertical environment. One day, time and erosion will reduce the cliffs to a pile of rubble, and the landscape will lose its most striking feature. But until then, they will remain a place of refuge for all the animals which can hang on to them. <laughs>